Okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. I'm prison Mike. You would never expect there's a hidden laptop now. That is so cool. A lot of people in the room, you need more space. Voila, right into the wall. Wow. The security gives me the biggest peace of mind. Security, um, that's a that's a killing like three birds with one stone. I realize this is an absurd amount of detail for something as basic as a desk, but we both think this concept is pretty perfect for van life and are hoping that if we share our ideas and our reasonings, you can take something like this office design and make an even better version for your own van. This entire Ultimate Van Build project has easily been the most challenging and tedious of our entire lives. And it all started with peeling off the stickers of a DPD van, adding sound deadening, and de-rusting and protecting the entire bottom of the chassis so we could start with a really strong foundation. Then we spray painted it all gray, added some side windows, roof windows, and customized the cab. After a failed custom water tank debacle, we ordered a plastic welder online and made our own water tanks, which included a custom 150 liter fresh water tank with temperature control that's mounted under the van and a 100 liter gray water tank that even has a camera and a light for dumping. After our five month long workshop renovation, we were able to prototype a slim one kilowatt solar tilting rack. We got custom seats and mounts, made our floor and insulation for the tough winters ahead and dove head first into our security setup, which even includes some automated dead bolting locks, five security cameras, and so much more. <laughs> then after another three month long barn renovation, we jumped back into the van and created our ceiling with built-in curtains, some fun back door and side door panels, a big photo curtain, we installed a 3D printer, a kitchen unit, a backsplash, and even a content creator tool board, and also some party lights. Few systems slowed us down a bit, such as Lottie building our own 13 kilowatt battery pack and creating a 48 volt electrical system that could support charging our two powerful e-bikes. Also the water system blew our brains for a few weeks, but eventually we welded our own hot water tank, installed heated floors, installed our ergonomic kitchen unit, and finally welded our aluminum bed frame and made a custom lift. In our previous episode, we had completed the passenger desk challenge, which had a goal of being able to work both while swiveled around to the back and while driving. But this driver desk office setup was much more challenging than we expected. But lucky for us, we're still riding on newlywed bliss and confident about taking on the winter ahead.
Another addition this week was the ceiling light dimmers. So see, this is for the back one. Dim it down. Pretty awesome. And then this for the front, just like this. I have been spending so much more time in this camper van recently, and I wanna to explain to you why that might be while we talk about today's video sponsor, Jackery. Jackery is redefining portable green energy. And this portable battery isn't just useful if you enjoy weekend getaways or camping trips. It's also really useful for just day-to-day -day life. I have been doing so much more of my computer work in here because it's just naturally kind of closer to where all of the filming is taking place. But we haven't really set up a system yet for laptop charging. So I've been using our Jackery Explorer 1000 to keep my laptop charged up the whole day while working online. Today is pretty overcast and gloomy outside. So I opted to charge our Jackery up via the wall socket. But any other opportunity we get, we charge it up via the solar panels. If you're like us and you love the Thanksgiving season, you must know that with it comes Black Friday and Cyber Monday and Jackery has our backs. They are doing unprecedented discounts and massive gift giveaways. So make sure you get your hands on a discounted Jackery product by heading down to the description below. Let's see the update. I have a stopper here so this is not gonna fly away. Cables in. It looks like it could be installed foot heater usb 230 got it all that's the <laughs> makeshift problem solving tool Gonna do the job. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way I'm gonna. Nope. nope. Can you describe what you're doing? So I have the right angle adjustment on the top of my Milwaukee drill, and then I have extension, and now I'm trying to fit the screw. Hopefully, it's gonna work out. Fingers crossed. <laughs> I am not gonna give up that easy. I'm going to make this way harder than it needs to be. Moment of truth. First try, and we'll see. Should feel like that, and then just be safe. Be safe. Wow, that was snug. It's snugger than I thought. Cool. Uh, I can still tweak how snug it is, but hopefully, I won't have to. My lid that doesn't have a handle yet. For my accessories. You would never expect there's a hidden laptop now. That is so cool. And also combines as a desk. This goes beautifully around the diesel heater that is sitting in there, sucking the fresh air from here and, and blowing all over the place. So one of the branches is blowing here. Um, open and close. Right at warming your feet. up mm -hmm. and this is my space for the mouse computer glasses car keys mainly that needs handle yeah. <laughs> 3d printed handle so i would ideally just grab and then you can lift it up when it even has your stuff on it mm -hmm. exactly just grab with all the things on and also reach a little bit like a uh, airpods <laughs> small things just from here USB 230 switch for this whole heating pad that we have. This step was a big consideration whether we should uh, use a heated floor or not because obviously opening and closing and a hinge and running wires but it is nice little detail and if we are talking about I think 100 watts when it's actively running for 13 kilowatt hour power bank it's not gonna be an issue so worth it. I'm excited to use that so often I forget about it. This is so camouflaged. It's easy to forget how <laughs> camouflaged it is. <laughs> Hi. 
the van build definitely slowed down a little bit because we've been splitting ourselves over over multiple projects and this definitely was not uh, one of the easier projects even though it's so small it fried my head multiple times like for example i haven't even finished the the charging and a monitor outlets so the goal was having the bottom sitting the laptop in measuring exact locations of a usb type c's drilling holes plugging in connector and a charger gluing them around curing overnight then you can unplug the laptop and every single time you push it in it goes straight into those connectors i encountered a problem that one of these usb extensions actually drained the power in the macbook so only overnight it completely drains the macbook battery so how do i solve that i don't know i don't want to be making switches to unplug and plug this <laughs> I knew exactly what to do, but in a much more real sense, I had no idea what to do. Maybe I'll just open it up and there's a little LED that probably uh, drains it. So that would definitely destroy my battery sooner or later. Especially when leaving it discharged there for multiple days. Mm. Cooling down the computer was important, so there's a router slot. Uh, right where the fan is. And um, that heater hose is properly insulated, not to heat them up. And uh, we'll see. We'll see how we test it out and how it works for us. It's interesting where the monitor is supposed to be somewhere here. A bit of an angle. Lower, lower much lower, like. yeah. It has to be quite but an actually, arm. Actually, that's, that's a bit of an arm. <laughs> that needs to be really stiff. I think the monitor should be here. We decided not to go with a curved monitor as well. It's too space inefficient. Unfortunately, I wish. The one I bought there, the 32 inch curved, <laughs> that's the one I hoped we could use. It's the lightest, it's five kilos only, but wow, how big space demanding that monitor is. Yeah. And it kind of trapped you over in your working space. Mm. It, I think it would become pretty inconvenient very shortly. We need to have a proper workstation. So I'm uh, going for a 27 inch 4K monitor that I'll be prototyping a really cool rail for it. No, God! No, God, please, no, 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 no! I want to be movable, hanging on a on an arm that slides left and right. Mm -hmm. The arm is height adjustable. You can stop it at any angle. And ideally, if the monitor has a ball joint here. So that means I can grab the monitor, position it anywhere I want. I can move it here and have a monitor here from a couch. When it's going back and forth, we can also flip it up and it can be a big screen like in the corner of the van for when we're cooking and checking the news or something. In oh, there. I'm watching a cook show. <laughs> that will be like our big screen and it will be able to, you know, adjust anywhere that we need it. Of all the idiots, in all the idiot villages, in all the idiot worlds, you stand alone. We ditched the rail because whoever sits here needs to have that laptop plugged in anyways. Mm -hmm. So whoever doesn't use this monitor sits in the other spot with the laptop anyways. It's kind of, I don't know, it didn't make any sense when we started researching and thinking about it a little more. Because I want to be hiding the monitor when it's flipped down here then going here to hide and then also flip hide here the 3d printer because that's not used all the time so it doubles that space as a monitor or a 3d printer super cool and then you have it exposed to the whole interior even outside we do a lot of projects like this here and uh, we definitely do make mistakes so <laughs> i'm not encouraging anybody to do the same thing i don't even know if it's gonna work <laughs> the previous one had a pole so there is always stability and uh, it was folding so poles like lifting up clicking the leg in happy this is a little bit more of a lever so that's definitely riskier I wish I didn't have to uh, be bringing the things away before folding it, but I like its uh, space saving and I like how tacky it is because this is something unusual, something <laughs> custom designed and maybe the slider will be annoying, maybe the lever will be too much, I don't know, but so far it really seems to be pretty cool. The security gives me the biggest peace of mind. I security, like. um, that's a that's a killing like three birds with one stone. <laughs>
becoming a little bit tough to be filming because not only is there a lot happening inside the workshop, but I need to grab the drone and capture what's going on outside for the container. This will be one of the one of another <laughs> mammoth glue tests. I'm curious how this is going to hold up. Properly sanded, climbed over three or four days. It's mammoth. You know you can actually print a bunch of models from the internet there's like infinite library of models people make and some of them are so much fun for kids flexi rex flexi rex is that what it's called <laughs> oh it has a top hat <laughs> aunt and uncle can't show up without gifts i'm How gonna scale it up 1.3 times <sighs> that's fun do i need to be liked absolutely not i like to be liked I enjoy being liked, I have to be liked, but it's not like this compulsive need to be liked, like my need to be praised. Show Margaret how you guys go in there together. <laughs> 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 Don't leave. <laughs> 